Good morning, and welcome back to City Skylines 2. We're going to continue growing this city. A couple of things we are going to do right now is we're... I think we're going to really consider building up. Um, not really... Ex not doing a urban sprawl. We have this area here, and then our industrial area is across the bridge, so I think we're going to try to high-rise it as much as we can here. Our industrial line is right here, and our, our commercial line's here. I think we're going to run Comrade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
fix that issue. Um, let me take a look here. Ah, that's the reason why we had the issue. Does that fix that? It should. It's uh, nothing important. I just lost my keys. I'm sure they'll turn up. They're for the brown sedan parked outside the radio station. Oh, wait. I probably shouldn't have said that if anyone finds them. Please, <laughs> don't, don't steal my car. I mean, the old hornbuckle mobile, please. Oh, good. Here they are. Well, never mind then. <laughs> Thank you for listening to uh, Second Moon. A housing shortage is driving up there prices in the area. That's right, Glenda. But apparently, that's not all good news. We're joined today by an expert guest, Professor Nutbutt. 
Welcome, Professor. So a housing shortage is bad for the people trying to move here, right? Humans are programmed to desire certain representations within ideological reward structures, which are entirely apart from the actual rewards enjoyed. For example, consider capital. One, one, one final question, Professor. Is the housing shortage going to make me richer? By certain metrics, perhaps yes, in the short term. I like the sound of that. But what we are discussing is the study okay. of a statistical abstraction and its effect on the human... Thank you, effect. Professor. Uh -huh. It is a question of priority. The leader of the City out. Services Division is with us in the studio today to talk about why they're contracting with outside agencies to provide vital services for our residents. Isn't that going to be costly, Mr. Councilman? Uh, well, quite frankly, yes. It is an additional expense, but the residents have come to expect a certain level of services, and we simply do not have the capacity to provide them within the city. Sounds like we're the ones who will end up paying for it. Should we be worried? I expect the residents would be more distressed if key services became unavailable. Their quality of life is very important to them. But so is their There we go. We'll be back after this. Now we can unpause. All right, so we have some farms going in here. Let's take that house out. We destroy the housing, but our population doesn't drop. I do find that kind of interesting. What is this? No pedestrian access. So, how is so we need to create a pedestrian path? This might be worthwhile unlocking. How many points we still have? Two points left. A college would be worthwhile. I don't think we need that yet. Rise 
towers built, which is good. And we're kind of keeping everything relatively localized. Okay, what are we going to do? I don't know. You know, this is kind of the sad part of this game. It, it, while you wait for stuff to come along, it's kind of boring. So, if you're watching gameplay, our population is going up, yet we wiped out almost all of the housing. That is something that is very difficult to explain. is fine. I'm just wondering. Now we're just going to set here. We're not we're not expanding anymore. Buy 
can set our budget because this is our budget. Recent spikes in demand have led to temporary local shortages in the city's fresh water supply. The public should be aware that we are struggling to get the situation in hand. This has been a local public service announcement. Pending updates to our power grid, the city will be experiencing rolling blackouts. We urge the public to remain calm during these breaks in service and to follow the guidelines on the city's website on how to plan for these temporary events. This has been a local public service announcement. This is Second Moon Radio, classical for the modern age. Unlike most modern music, classical has always been penned by someone sitting in front of a sheet of blank paper, using only their imaginations as guides through a silent audio masterpiece. Now, here we sit listening at full volume, and our souls are transported. Hmm. But let us not tarry. On to the next episode. There we go. And on to our main feature story. The commercial district is booming as the area is attracting more high-end stores, bringing the latest in luxury to our neighborhood. You can now shop okay. for designer shoes while sipping a fancy we local java mate. Or so my wife tells me. That's good for that. business and good for the community. Thanks, Jim. Now run we'll be that back after. Right up. A housing to shortage there. is driving up prices in the area. That's right, Linda. But apparently that's not all good news. We're joined today by an expert guest 
Professor Nutbottom. Welcome, Professor. So a housing shortage is bad for the people trying to move here, right? Humans are programmed to desire certain representations within ideological reward structures, which are entirely apart from the actual rewards enjoyed. For example, consider capital. One, one, one final question, Professor. Is the housing shortage going to make me richer? By certain metrics, perhaps, yes, in the short term. I like the sound of that. But while we are discussing is the study of a statistical abstraction that and its effect on the human Thank thing. you, Professor. It is a question of priority. and done you know what we're gonna call this episode complete and with that said stay safe and bye for now